Hey guys, is it William? Yes, yes, it's William. Hi William, glad to hear you. <laughs> yeah, you too, excited to be here, thank you. How is it going, how has it been? Well, uh, the start of the year is um, a rush as always, you know, people, I think uh, the two weeks of holiday, week of holiday is enough that we get back and everybody's rushing, okay, let's go, let's move. What do we have to do? It's a whole new year starting, you know? So I'm sure it's the same for you guys. It's crazy. Uh, pretty much, but we're in Israel, so we didn't sort of have a new year. Our new year was in September. It's just ordinary working days. <laughs> no, oh, we, did, wow. we, did, we did some stuff with the new Edema. <laughs> William, how, how, how are you, man? <laughs> Very nice, very nice. How are I'm you? I'm great, I'm great. I love the, it's the Star Trek style profile picture. It looks good. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. Exo, with the Exo yeah. World's touch, but uh, yeah. Yeah, so fitting, fitting my, the logo. Uh, Lucas is our, you know, my brother, he's the creative design. He's the head of creativity at Exo Worlds, also, also the sorts of mythology, the website designs and, and all of this he makes. And so he always loves Star Trek, Star Wars. He takes inspiration from everywhere and puts it together, you know. All right. We definitely need some of that. So uh, more Star Wars and Star Trek yeah, lovers. Yeah. <laughs> nice. All right. You guys are gamers, are long gamers. You guys play for what kind of games you guys used to play? Well, to be honest, I'm being asked about it quite a, quite a lot. And I think I should, getting, uh, I should get my own gaming rig because of that. I'm not that big of a gamer, but there are a couple of games that I really like. And one of them was actually the recent Star Wars one. Uh, the uh, Jedi Order or the Fallen Jedi, the one with the orange hair. So that was amazing, if you played it. Uh -huh. and, uh, and I love Doom really much. So I also answered about this for one of the amazing. Yeah, so I'm pretty simple like that. Yeah. Oh. Other than that, you know... Uh, Big level of NFTs, right? So, and all the utilities of the games and the metaverses are coming in. We'll be speaking about it in the future. And uh, Dima, for yeah. games, if you have an answer, you know, usually I know that your answer is coming from your kids. <laughs> yes, exactly. I don't have time for games right now, unfortunately. But my son uh, is fond of playing Minecraft, uh, mainly building stuff. Yeah. When I was I a teenager, I used to play um, Civilization, I guess. That was my favorite that game. It was a good game, actually. It was a really good game. Yeah, yeah. I Age of uh, Age of Empires, Age of Mythology. Yeah. Anybody? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All, all of those heroes, uh, Civilization, Starcraft. So those those I played well. Yeah, the strategy games. That was fun. All right, uh, but I agree with you. Nowadays, it's <laughs> less time for games, but. Uh, some always homage to our old lovely played games. Yeah, but I can assure you we have uh, some serious hardcore gamers in the XP Network team, so we get that taste as well. For sure. All right, so um, a few words before we start. Um, we Basically, the conversation would be um, like an open conversation. We're going to talk a bit about, you know, uh, ExoWorlds, about XP Network, uh, the utilization of the XP Network bridge, getting ExoWorld into the multi-chain. And they also of Exo World's uh, goals and roadmap for 2023. And uh, we are eager to hear for everyone that tuned live and everyone that is also going to be listening to this after this recording, uh, after this live for the recording itself. And um, this will be great information to actually sort to. So um, without further ado, uh, William, it will be great to hear like in a few sentences and what is what Exo World is all about and uh, what can we expect from in the next year? Yeah, yeah sure. Well, first, thank you guys so much for having me. Um, we've been working together for several, several weeks now, and it has been really good, really smooth. We've uh, already managed to bridge many, many XOWorlds NFTs over cross-chain. Um, so to begin, XOWorlds, hello, everybody. For those guys who don't know, my name is William. Uh, I'm the Chief of Operations for XOWorlds. I handle all the daily operations from the website development, game development, to the marketing. Exo Worlds, in short, is an NFT project uh, we minted in February of last year, and we slowly evolved into a metaverse project. We wanted to bring those NFTs to life in the metaverse, a playable game, bring utility to people, and hopefully from there grow. You know, the metaverse is not supposed to be just one game. It's supposed to be a piece of something larger. Uh, so that is the long-term goal. And as we grow, to connect with as many people as possible to make that happen.
that's the uh, few liner if I would sum it up. Yeah, sorry. I don't... Yeah, thank you, thank you for thank you very much for that, and that's definitely what we are very much excited about, and we have been very very happy to actually do these transactions with ExoWorld and uh, seeing up all the amazing utilities that are actually uh, coming up with ExoWorld's uh, NFTs and everything that you know of all we see right now in the market. That um, it's actually a good point to mention that when we started XP Network, we really thought you know that we wanted to see more kinds of utilities, more kinds of games, of metaverses, of different kinds of um, aspirations for NFTs, like, you know, the music industry and like uh, uh, contracts and maybe uh, many, many other, you know, kinds of utilities that we didn't see back in 2021, 2020, when uh, we initiated the idea and actually started uh, building up XP Network. And seeing, you know, everything that you guys are building around the world and uh, how impactful it is, you know, for you guys to be able to reach to the other communities and this is something that is fulfilling the very much, you know, the idea of the metaverse and is to reach as wide as audience as possible. And this is exactly what we, uh, we've been eager to build with XP Network and to give that ability in a seamless and an easy way for everyone that takes part in this. So I'm super happy to be uh, doing these transactions with ExoWorld and Dima will be sharing more about uh, more details about uh, the overall process. And um, yeah, from our side, we've been uh, very happy to to do to do these guys uh, to do this for you guys to move over from VeChain to Ethereum, I believe, right? We move to Ethereum to in order to list an OpenSea. Yeah, that's exactly right. We have uh, I think eight hundred NFTs now uh, from the whole community over on on Ethereum, which is already a great start. Um, so it's eight percent, you know, or so, and. With how many chains that uh, XP networks uh, XP network works with, you know, if you have eight percent on every chain and you have quite a decentralized NFT project, that's already a great start for sure. Yeah, sure, and that. Uh, on a on a different note, wanted to hear more a bit about you know the fundamentals of the world uh, for the community for everyone listening in and also after the after in the recording. And um, can you tell us a bit more about? We started talking about this before about the whole design process, the whole. And the whole creative part is actually inspired Exo Worlds and for you guys to be to create NFTs and to build your own metaverse. Yeah, well, I was just on a call with my team and I was uh, one of my marketing guys, and I was just telling them how amazing it is to go through. So I'm, I'm one of my tasks right now is to help create the white paper, um, and the white paper really includes everything and all the most up to date information about Exo Worlds. Everything from gameplay, the open world game, the galactic strategy game that we're building for mobile, all the galactic assets, NFTs, and each one of those little things. You know, if I were to take an example, we have uh, custom X Worlds items, and that's nothing new. I think we've posted a lot about that. People know about those, but the creative process of going with each item, and right now we have them named, oh, gun, or solar punk gun, handgun. But that's not how it's going to end up. You know, that's that's just a beginning. And we're going to have to do a whole creative process to what is the handgun going to be called? What is the assault rifle going to be called? You know, we have many different themes because the galaxy and the universe is so big. So you don't have just, oh, assault rifle, that's it. No, you have a dystopian assault rifle. You have a solar punk assault rifle. And so the, the more that we can bring this creativity to the users of... I want an assault rifle, but this particular one, I don't like the design. I don't like the look. I'm not a bright, happy, everything is amazing future guy. I'm a, you know, hard crypto punk, dystopian kind of guy. I want black gun with red lights. Well, there is a, a section for you in X Worlds. Um, we're also doing that with all the characters, the planets. What is the story behind the planets? What is the story behind the X Worlds galaxy? You know, who created it? Um, where are we? Are we, did Exo World start at the beginning of the universe? Or are we already millions of years into the development of the universe and players will have to sort of go on their own adventure to find out what happened before them? Um, a, a lot of this creativity, my brother and I have always liked science a lot. Uh, myself, physics, quantum physics, you know, relativity, all these kinds of stuff. And what always amazed me is that Einstein, I think everybody can agree here that Einstein was probably one of the smartest scientists who has ever lived, a physicist who understood the nature of the universe, and he believed in God. And if you would ask Einstein, he would say that if you knew enough about physics and about science, 
there was no way for you to not believe in God just because of how everything is so perfectly made and so beautiful. And so we took a lot of concepts and, and ideas from that in terms of what is going to be the, the lore and the, is there going to be a God in our universe? Is there going to be an ancient race that commands over everything? Um, a good TV show for people to watch here is His Dark Materials. It's based on a, a TV novel. Uh, the Golden Compass, if anybody watched that movie back in the yeah, day. Yeah, I read, read, uh, read the it's, first book, I think, back, uh, back like 10 years ago, possibly. Yeah, 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 nice. Well, that's a fantastic series. And, and the, the creativity that went into that was, I mean, I, I take my hat off to, to the author. Um, and so, like I mentioned before, it's not just from one place. Uh, to really make a, a great experience, we wanted to take as much inspiration from everywhere possible. So that's on the more creative side, um, you know, sort of just what can users expect when they start playing, when they get into it. On the more fundamental side, um, going into a little bit, touching on the cross-chain possibilities and, and how we're working with, with XP Network and beyond, there's our NFTs. Those are already cross-chain, to, thanks to your guys' help and your guys' fantastic code. Um, and then there's also our token, which we want to mirror. You know, we want to mirror the token being able to be cross-chain. Um, I think it's well known now. For those of you don't who don't know, anybody who owns an Exo World NFT will receive Exo World's token airdrop. And we wanted it to be able so that if you used XP Network and transferred your NFT over to Ethereum, well, you will still get your airdrop in Ethereum in the ETH version of the Exo token. So that was something that we wanted to make sure was done so that everything that we did in our partnership with XP Network for NFTs could follow as well with our token. That's on the token, the NFT side. So lots of cross-chain possibilities. Um, then we have the game development side, which I think for most people is probably the most exciting. Um, we've had a lot of showings. Uh, we went to Blockchain Rio in September. We were even able to play a demo down there. We had a computer open, people were able to play. Very simple demo, you know, PVP maps, um, which we have been upgrading ever since. We have added now the Galaxy map, which is a 3D environment where users will be able to explore, fly around, search for planets, view their beautiful 4K planets up close in a 3D environment, you know, scroll all around them, they'll be able to buy. Um, that was also mixed with planet flying. Um, so once you select a planet and you really want to look at it, you'll be able to zoom in and be in a spaceship flying around that planet. You'll invite players to fight with you, dogfights. So all of this will be wrapped, including the PvP maps, into something we're calling the ExoWorlds prototype, um, which we're working on to release in this first quarter. If you're in our Discord, for those of you who aren't in our Discord, we release sneak peeks every now and then. If you're a whale listening in, you know that the whales get uh, more sneak peeks than the rest. Uh, it's a nice perk of being a whale. So yeah, those are really the main things that we're working on. Heavy on the creative creativity side, heavy on the cross-chain with our NFTs and our token, and heavy as well with our demo. Ah, uh, excuse me, with our prototype, the Exo Worlds prototype. Thank you for that, William. And uh, I want to say, first of all, you know, regarding to the demo and the prototype, exactly. So this is exactly what we want to see in the market, you know, going towards utility and going exactly, you know, to actually put hands on, even if it's in very initial stages and very like simple and practical things just to show in, in expos or actually uh, ability to play for the users. This is, you know, the way that the market shifts and where it should be shifting to our, like, you know, to our suggestion that we should push to more utility, especially now in this bear market. And I'm going to ask you a bit about a bit more about the bear market and how you guys are affected by all of this. But uh, basically, you know, to sum this up, very good to see that you guys are already having a working prototype. And we saw this with different games and that uh, we actually had a game called Defiance. If you heard about it a few weeks back and it's about to actually launch, but there is already, even though the website is not live yet, there is already the ability to actually go and get access to the Discord to actually go and play the game and actually experience the game without the need for any token, without the need for anything else. And these are the practical things that actually make the next step for the crypto evolution, for the market itself. And we are, in XP Network, we are big believers that the NFTs 
uh, what could attract off crypto community into the space in a way and in a sum that has not been affected or created before by the valuation or the trading aspects of the crypto space. So kudos on that. Uh, following up you know, to my next question, yeah. I wanted to ask exactly about the bear market and how does it affect your plans and how do you see it affects overall the user base and the overall development of X2 Worlds? I'm sorry, I'm so sorry. You, you cut out a, a bit there for me. Could you repeat that last question? Sure. So regarding to the... You hear me fine now? Yeah. Please. Yeah. So regarding to the bear market, so how you guys are affected by it and how does it affect your plans for 2023? And uh, sum and sum up as well. How does it overall affect your user base and the, the progression of Exoworld? Yeah, well, a fantastic question. Um, of course, the the bear market has, has hit us like it's in everyone. Um, one of the things that I'm glad about is way back when we minted our NFTs in February. I feel like our team has made preparations for the fact that a bear market. We were already sort of in a bear market, and now it's only gotten worse. And so I'm glad that it hasn't been to a point where the bear market hit. we have to shut down the company. More, more than that, uh, Lucas and I and, and the core founders of ExoWorld, we believe so much in ExoWorld that we've actually put in, beyond the mint funds, we've put in hundreds of thousands of dollars of our own money into ExoWorld to keep it going, keep it alive, because we know how strong of a project it is. Um, it is something that the VeChain ecosystem sorely needs, the larger crypto ecosystem sorely needs. And there are plenty of other metaverse projects out there and each one you know, has, a, has, a great, uh, has great points and positives and negatives. But I think, and of course I'm biased, that ExoWorld is unique because of the team and because of the product. So right now, bear market, like you say, one of the focuses are trying to capture more funding as always. Um, as I mentioned, me and Lucas, we have put in our own money into the project, but that only always goes so far. We need a project, we need funding, we need to launch the prototype, we need to make the project profitable by itself. And that's also where the bear market hits is player, user base. You know, we have about 1,500 people in our Discord, um, and if you were to use that as the most active metric, is 1,500 people enough to really be a sustainable project? How many thousands of people do you need to make a project profitable and sustainable? Those are a couple of models that we're looking at. Um, and we're taking those into account when we do our token sale planning. Our token sale was supposed to be in September of last year originally, but because of the bear market and because of developments and, and lack of growth, we've had to push it back and push it back and that puts stresses on the project, but at the end of the day, it's for the best. Because if you go into it wrong in a bear market where there's not a lot of engagement, there's not a lot of users, and you make a token sale, it flops, it doesn't, it doesn't sell as you want it to, then it sets a bad pace for the rest of your project forever. And so we were much more happy with keeping things on the low key, funding it ourselves, and when the time is right, which I already feel sort of the tides shifting it may be just me i mean maybe there are i see that there are some other project leaders here in the chat as well i've noticed that in the last especially the last few weeks there has been a lot more engagement there have been new people joining our discord interacting with us online um, and for me that's the most important out of anything because the users are what bring the utility and the utility comes to the users so, I mean, we can put out a demo, a prototype, we can make items that people can buy and customize and all of that utility, but what is the point if we don't have the users? So we're gonna keep a, a close eye on that. You know, there, there, there have been a decent amount of, of delays in our project, which I think is normal. Uh, I think what's important is as, as long as we stay on top of it, as long as we show the community that, that hey, there are delays, but we are working. And some of this is because the, the bear market changes the atmosphere. You know, it, it really does change the atmosphere, but we're here, we're fighting, and we're continuing. Um, that's our stance. Thank you for that. And exactly, exactly for that, what we see right now are projects that are, following up with the previous note, projects that are pushing up towards utility this is right now, you know, especially in this bear market, this is their time to shine, right? So you guys are basically what you guys are doing is you focus up on the utility, you focus up on building the community, 
less about you know slogans and hype and this is what will take you through the bear market so um, you know from our experience and from talking to projects that are really hands-on and actually bringing value and bringing interest and bringing actual playability with their uh, with their nft project and uh, this is uh, this is what we are very happy to see right now in the in this market and this is where we see also transactions in the in, in the in the different kinds of utilities of the bridge now I uh, wanted to ask yeah. uh, regarding to the regarding to your first decision to actually go with VeChain, and uh, why did you actually guys decide to go with VeChain, and what do you have in mind in terms of expanding to the other to the other protocols? Yeah, so VeChain, uh, my brother and I started with VeChain many years ago. It was just after the 2017 bull run. I think in 2018, uh, we wanted to get our hands dirty with crypto, and we have always been a little bit more, I guess, cautious, fundamentally driven. Uh, we saw a lot of cryptos out there. We wanted to do our proper research. And, you know, when we did the research and we saw all the fantastic things that VeChain was doing, working with, we decided to invest there. And for many years, we were just sort of silent investors. Um, we even came to be some, some influencers on the VeChain space. We were known as the VeChain brothers. For anybody here who didn't know. And we decided to finally get our you know, get ourselves into, not just be on the sidelines as investors, but build. Sunny Lou is always saying, come out here and build. That's what we need. And so that's what we wanted to do. And we were already heavy into VeChain. So it opened the doors for us. Uh, but I definitely don't think that anybody should be married to any one chain, um, which is why we're, we're so focused on our cross-chain uh, possibilities. As it stands, we're looking to cross-chain with Ethereum and Binance Smart Chain, those are already written into our token smart our token smart contracts. So when our token goes live, people will be able to cross chain with Ethereum and with Binance Smart Chain. Um, using XP network as well, the NFTs will be able to do as such. And I think that we want to follow as much as the XP network uh, list goes. So everybody here listening in, I, I don't know if you've been to the XP bridge uh, solution, but you log in, you put in your, you know, your VeChain wallet and you can decide where you want to bridge to and you get a list of tons of different chains. And if every project could be like that, obviously it can't be like that right away, but if every project could be like that, then we would achieve a real decentralization, all these blockchains mixing and mixing of tokens, NFTs, and that's the point we want to get to. Um, I also take some words from uh, Charles Hoskinson, the, the CEO of ADA. Back in the day, he would talk a lot about interoperability. And eventually, we want to get to the blockchain of blockchains, right? All these blockchains connecting, talking together. And um, some people think, oh, no, we have to maximize VeChain. But mixing all these blockchains together will maximize everything for everyone. You know, everyone will grow because of it. So I, I'm a big believer of that. Thank you for that. And I want to say that exactly, you know, for us, for XP Network, pushing up all of those blockchains is for the purpose of creating true, you know, decentralizations, break up the barriers and create a unified space for the interactions between the different chains and between the different protocols and the games and the, and, and the different utilities of the NFTs and the metaverses, you know. So all of those, basically, all the NFT projects, all the NFT depths are all like having the same focus, right? They want to get to the widest possible reach to create a sustainable community and for that most of them are actually very much eager to explore the other protocols which was before XP Network something that is pretty expensive and pretty technical heavy to actually to create to create that support and to create that you know safety overall safety guards around uh, around launching your project your NFTs and your fungible tokens on the other on the other protocols as well so XP Network makes it all simple and I want to say exactly building up on what you, uh, what you mentioned about XP and the list of the chains, every chain that we actually have live right now on the bridge, all of those chains are heavily tested, heavily audited. We are doing that in full partnerships with those chains. So we also get, we also get grants from a lot of the chains that we actually support. And all of those are conducted, conducted partnerships in the purpose with the blockchains themselves, with their team, in the purpose of creating that full decentralization and a full unified space for projects and NFT dApps to actually cross across, uh, to cross with, right, across over all the bridge itself. This is what we want to see, and this is what the blockchains as well want to see, laying out the infrastructure for 
uh, for the overall unification of the market. So that is our take on that. A few, uh, one more note, and then I want to move to uh, to Dima to tell us a bit more about the integration process and moving up uh, all those NFTs across the bridge. Uh, I wanted to actually uh, mention that we have on top of the bridge itself, we have bridge at xp.network. We have three more mainnet products that are live. We have the API, which is for every NFT project, the ability to basically have the powers of the bridge in a couple of clicks straight into your uh, straight into your project. And we have the Explorer, which is a very fun place to actually look around. We explorer.xp.network. You can actually see all the NFTs. This is the only place right now in the market that you can actually go and see how NFTs are moving between different protocols. So it's something pretty cool to see. And uh, lastly, we have the widget. So the widget is a, a very cool way, basically like Webflow or Wix, that you can customize your own bridge interface and implement it in your new NFT game, new, new project or website itself by all customizations that you actually have in your design. So all together is to make it easier and more accessible for actually, for actually to, enjoy, to get the utility of the bridge implemented into the NFT project. And now, without further ado, Dima, I would really like to hear a bit more about, you know, the overall process of moving the NFTs with ExoWorlds, and uh, how was it more from the technical side? Well, this was a bit unusual, uh, because usually projects, uh, the users of the projects uh, send NFTs to foreign chains. Uh, and in this case, uh, we were sending lots of NFTs in batches, even they, even though they are not um, 1155 contract NFTs, but we uh, developed a special script that allows to send lots of NFTs um, in a loop, uh, in parallel, without having to do a lot of clicks and a lot of uh, signing transactions manually, because otherwise it would be very boring and very hard to, to do so. Um, even after this uh, part of this collection was transferred to Ethereum, uh, we created a series of videos, actually five videos, explaining how this project can be uh, built and how uh, users can uh, transfer NFTs in batches without having to interact with Sync2 Wallet. If any one of you has tried sending an NFT with this wallet, you would know that it approximately takes from three to five minutes to transfer one NFT. If not, if, if not in a loop, in a loop it's a bit faster using the UI, but in a scripted it's even more fast it's even faster. Uh, so what happens is uh, you first have to approve a transaction. In order to do that, you have to uh, select uh, and then click certain buttons in the UI. Then it takes you to the wallet. Then you have to log into the wallet mm -hmm. with the password. Then you have to sign a transaction, like a couple of clicks. Then it submits the transaction to the blockchain. And, and all this time, you just have to wait. And only then you can transfer. And you do the same thing uh, in a loop a lot of times. So we uh, figured that when a big collection migrates, it's uh, it's going to take a lot of time like to, to migrate, uh, let's say, 1,000 NFTs. If you do it manually, it could take you like a month. Uh, well, knowing that you have to sleep and eat sometimes. But with this, uh, with this um, API that Nir just uh, mentioned and uh, with uh, the script that we presented in those videos, you can actually do it in a day which is much better than in a month. And so I recommend you all to go and watch those videos and see how it was done. Uh, we also show you how you can access different wallets mm -hmm. in uh, uh, Sync 2, or how you can generate multiple wallets and how you can access them and how you can send NFTs from multiple wallets uh, generated from the same uh, mnemonic. And uh, you could also follow the example of uh, ExoWorlds and, and uh, send something from VeChain to other blockchains. I, I assure you it's very exciting. And uh, speaking about ExoWorlds, I wanted to mention that we had a very good example of a collection called Drifters. They actually migrated from Ethereum to a non-EVM chain called Elrond. And I just checked, like as we were speaking, I just checked there's still number two collection on Elrond. They haven't lost their position. Um, which is pretty cool. So a collection from Ethereum is number two on a non-EVM chain all around up to up till now. I think they've been uh, holding this posi position for like half a year. So I wanted to ask uh, William, maybe don't you think it would be a good idea to uh, try and transfer at least part of your collection to a non-EVM chain because there you would surely get um, new users 
that you don't have in EVM environments? What do you think? Gosh, I mean, look, if, if you would ask me off the top of my head, uh, Ethereum is the obviously EVM. Um, it's the largest chain out there, right? The most amount of users. So if we go to Ethereum and we can't capture an audience, then there's nowhere we can go to capture an audience, you know, because it, it's the biggest pool. Um, we could always, uh, so I'm not the most technical person out there. We could also go to Solana. I don't think Solana is not EVM, is it? So Solana is not EVM, no. Right. So we could go to Solana and try because they're also, I mean, they're not as big as Ethereum, but they're massive and we could try there. I think that would be a great idea, but I guess our plan had always been to try, start, start with the biggest, the most amount of people to try to soak in, you know, osmosis works great. Uh, just be in the space and grow. And if it doesn't work in Ethereum, I don't see why it would work anywhere else. Um, but Solana is definitely a chain that we are looking for. So yeah, it's not a bad idea. Okay, so after the conversation, let's think about moving to Solana, at least part of the collection. Great idea. Yeah. Actually, a quick question about that, William. It's an interesting, interesting thing that you are uh, still, you know, a voter for Solana. What do you guys think about Solana right now? Jeez, well, a lot of uh, definitely a lot of a lot of critique to go around. I'm I'm not so informed, honestly. The only thing that I know about Solana is that the price is real low. They stop their blockchain all the time. Um, I've never really paid that much attention to them, aside from knowing that they have a huge community and that it's been on our list of cross-chain possibilities because we want to target their community. So to really answer you, I would have to do some, some proper studying and not just looking at the price because I don't think that's fair to the chain and to the builders. But um, I'm sure that they're doing a lot of great stuff. Um, uh, Star Atlas, which is a sort of competitor, not direct competitor of ours, is building on Solana. You know, I'm, I'm sure they build there for a reason. They have a massive community. And um, yeah, it goes to show that there definitely is some merit there. So on the point of Solana itself, Dima and I actually been a few days before the, before the major overall FTX situation and the overall Solana. We have been in the expo at uh, Portugal uh, of uh, Solana Breakpoint. And this is exactly, you know, we're not being asked about Solana right now. Is exactly what we what we agree about that Solana has still an amazing community and amazing builders, and this is their biggest value. So they are. I'm actually interested, you know, from your take as you know, seeing Solana in that way as well, because right now a lot of people have this biased view about Solana at this moment. But I agree. So Solana does hold a lot of potential uh, potential value with its community and its builders. Yeah. Well, William is absolutely correct that the most important in every blockchain is the communities, the ecosystem. So if there is some fish to look for, then we shouldn't look at the token price and what's going on around. Uh, and uh, it's super important for ExoWorlds to uh, be exposed to as many users as, as possible. And for that reason, I'm, I agree that Solana is a good choice. Yeah. All right. So uh, on that note, we are getting close to the end of the, the end of this AMA, and I wanted to have uh, you, William, to say up for the community that have both tuned in and will be also be listening to this after the recording. Where can we find more about ExoWorld? And what can we expect from ExoWorld over twenty twenty three? Yeah. Well. The number one, guys, I think the most helpful resource that there always is, is our Discord. Um, we have a fantastic community that anytime you guys want to come in, learn a little bit more, they're happy to help. Sometimes they're much faster than I am, and I'm on my computer practically the whole day. Um, we have a lot of resources also on the website. Keep in mind, we're, we're making some big changes in this month of January. We're remaking our homepage, our tokenomics page, just for everything to be more user-friendly and for information to be more user-friendly. Um, our big ticket items moving into quarter one are complete the prototype that is absolutely essential. To move forward, to be able to ask more from the community, from the wider blockchain space, we need to show that we have a product, we need to show that the product is good, and that we're capable of using funds to make something that people are gonna like. 
So absolutely number one is the demo, uh, the prototype, I'm sorry. Uh, personally, I'm also working on finishing, like I said in the beginning, our white paper and our pitch deck. Beyond that, marketing is, um, if not number one, number two. You know, it doesn't make sense to make a game and then send all these NFTs to Ethereum if nobody knows about your project. So I tip my hats off to our marketing guys, Roni and Gabriel. They're working every day tirelessly to make sure that we always have new content. We're starting to prepare our entire strategy for paid ads, promotions across Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, all social media platforms. Um, we're also hoping to leverage later in this month the massive UFC event that's going to be happening down here in Brazil, which, of course, you know, VChain is partnered with, and we're going to be helping them host and set up that event down there. Um, hopefully, we'll put a lot of eyes onto ExoWorld just as our marketing is taking a little upbeat. So the, that's 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 really what we want to do. I don't I don't even say for the whole of 2023. I'm, I'm much more focused. Our goals we want to achieve them in Q1. Release this prototype. Get the pitch deck. Get the white paper out. Bump up our marketing. And you know what? Once we make it through Q1, then we can tackle Q3 and Q2, Q3, and Q4. Fair enough. Thank you for that. And where the community can actually tune in to ExoWorld? What is the best way for the community to actually join in and to ask questions and follow up more? Yeah, ExoWorld's Discord. Feel free to join. You guys can come over to uh, our ExoWorld's Twitter and find a link. Um, and uh, everybody happy to interact with you, answer any questions you guys have. All right, William, thank you for that. Dina, thank you as well. And uh, looking forward to move more NFTs with ExoWorlds across the different, uh, across the different chains. And uh, looking forward to see the overall the launch of the prototype and the new website. William, looking forward to, to do this again as well. Yeah. Thank you yeah. so much, guys. Thank you so much. XP Network, absolutely fantastic. Wouldn't be the same without you guys. Thank you. See you soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, everybody. Yeah, thank you, William. It's a real pleasure working with you, and I hope uh, the community will enjoy the game as soon as it comes out. I'm sure it's going to be super exciting from what I see. And uh, just let, let us know when it's ready. Um, I guess I'll try to play if I have time. <laughs> yes, that's, that's great. All right. Hey, thank you so much, Dima. I appreciate it. You have a great day. Thanks. You too. Bye-bye, everybody.